the subject, value matters. Value matters. <clears throat> value, definition. The regard that something is held to deserve, the importance, worth, or usefulness of something, one's judgment of what is important in life. The regard that something is held to deserve, the importance, worth, or usefulness of something, one's judgment of what is important in life. Value matters. Why does it matter? Because it will determine ultimately what you put your time and energy and money toward. I, I came up... Uh, without a, a, out a father in the house. My, I didn't meet my dad till I was 21. Some of you may have heard this testimony before. I didn't meet my dad till I was, I was 21. Uh, and I know the, the, the I, I, it was almost like shame, if, if you will, because other people, when they, when they came to school, they had both parents and I literally, at the age of 11, didn't understand the, the uh, concept of procreation, that it actually takes two people. I thought I just had a mama. That was it. And so I made a vow that if I had children, they're going to know who their daddy is. That was something I, I valued and I continue to value. I don't like the fact that I, I work so late sometimes that I can't pick up my children. That's just that's that's something that's important to me. I, I value that. I value my wife. I don't think I don't think there's a day go by I don't say something that I, I want to get a reaction from her, make her smile, you know, that kind of thing. Girl, you know you're looking good, girl. You know. Yes, sir. Because I, I value her. And because I value her, I, I value her opinion on, on certain things. So if she has something, uh, 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 some alt against me, let's say, I want to figure out what that is so I can try to fix that. You know, you know, I, I, you know washing dishes is kind of, ain't my thing. I hate it. I hate it. But I'm working on it. I fixed I, I fixed the uh, the the sink the other day. It had been leaking for about a couple of weeks, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna call uh, Deacon Barnes or not. <clears throat> and I said, "No, nah, I think I see what the problem is. Let me go ahead and go and get it fixed." Cause uh, this kind of happened when, like our first year of marriage, we were living in a place where our uh, garbage disposal went out, and I <coughs> I took the <laughs> the garbage disposal completely out. So there was a hole in the sink for about, I don't know, maybe a month. I, I'm not exactly sure. And so she got fed up with that. And she told me, put something there so I can have me two sides of my sink. So I valued that. And I figured out how to get another one and put it in and install it and it worked. That was something I, I value. And you, this time of year, you figure out what people value a lot. I, I'm, I'm going to people's houses, putting in cable and all this other kind of stuff. And I mean, literally, they're on roofs putting lights up. You know, I, some, I'm like, how, I don't even know how you got up there. Why would you get up there for that? But that's something that the world values. And ultimately, if you don't know what the value of something is, is great, a great way to get conned. Great way to get conned. Had a, I think either my wife sent it to me or my mother sent me an article of 
a man and his wife, they were going to jail for fraud. Now, the interesting thing about it was he's a pastor. And what he was selling were golden tickets to heaven. This is the second time he's been arrested for this, by the way. Now, the thing about it, as sad as that is, the, the, the ticket prices were, I want to say, $600 a ticket. $600 a ticket. And it's only fraud if people buy it. So, of course, people were buying it. And it turned out, this is a true story, uh, it turns out the, the tickets were actually wooden that had been spray painted gold. So they weren't even real gold. Now, here's the thing. I'm a person, I, I understand value of certain things. Gold is one of them. An ounce of gold today it's about close to $1,500 an ounce. It's close to $1,500 an ounce. That's not very much. And I'm thinking, if, let's not even, let's not even talk about the spiritual aspect of there's only one way to get there. Yes, sir. Let's not talk about that, that, that uh, Jesus said, if you come in any other way, you're going to be deemed a thief and a robber. Yes, let's just talk about the physical aspect of this. So I'm thinking that ticket had to weigh at least an ounce, at least, at least. So at four, almost $1,500, why would you sell it for $600? But the reason they were buying it because they didn't know the value. They didn't know the value. Jesus is bringing forth this parable and he says, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Now, back in the day, this is before the information age. Information age, you can get rich on a computer. But back in the day, you had to have land. Most, some of you who know anything about Westerns, uh, Bonanza, Ponderosa was a big piece of land in Nevada. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were rich because they had a lot of land. If you know if you know anything about uh, uh, Ray Kroc, he's deemed the, the founder of of the McDonald's as we know it. And at the story goes, he was he had a business class, and he took the business class out for uh, to eat for lunch, <laughs> and he asked the students, "What business do you think I'm in?" So they laughed. Oh. They laughed and he said, no, 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 really, what, what business do you think I'm in? And somebody said, Ray, now you know, you're in the hamburger business. He said, I thought that's what you said. He said, I'm not, I'm not in the hamburger business. I'm in the real estate business. McDonald's is the number one real estate owner behind the Catholic Church. The business is set there to pay for the land. Land, many of the, the landowners, the wealthy families in America, the, like the top 10, I saw the, uh, the list a couple of, maybe a few months back, many of them own thousands of acres of land. Thousands. Unheard of. So because that was the, that's a form of wealth. So this man, Bible says he's rich and his land produces a lot of produce. And he said, he thought within himself saying, what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? It's coming in so fast, I don't even know what to do with it. It's more than I can personally uh, uh, spend in a lifetime. There are people that have so much money and it's like, dude, what are you doing? Why, why would you go this place and then and, and, and throw it all away? 
football players, uh, artists, you know, they, they get all this money, but they have no idea what to do with it. They don't value what it represents. It could buy their freedom, but instead they've allowed it to be their bondage. Beware lest we fall into that. 18, and he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Now, we've heard this phrase all over the place. Eat, drink, and be merry. I don't have to worry about anything. My 401k is intact. I got property here. I got, I got this. Uh, they have a thing called multiple streams of income. I got money coming from here, here, here. And it supplies me with everything I need. And a lot of people get trapped into that, thinking that that is what's keeping them. That's what's holding them. That's, what's, uh, 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 th that's their anchor. They don't, understand, they don't understand value. Our Listen, our children may not understand value. And they don't understand the value. Many children don't know, understand the value of going to church. They don't understand the value of what the word of the Lord does for them. And it's hard for them to understand it if the parent ain't grounded. If you make excuses for why your child can, don't be surprised when later on he plays the victim. Value. It matters what you think is important because it dictates your behavior. The officer who took the wallet of a dead person and didn't know her, 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 her body cam was on thought that the money that was in the wallet was more precious than her job and her freedom. It's sad. Value. And at this time of year, value's everywhere. Oh, go to the go to Walmart. Right. <laughs> go somewhere they're gonna try to sell you on every you don't even know you you didn't even think you needed that. <laughs> you don't even know what it is. Right. Right. But it looked good and it's cheap. Right. That's right. Come on, preacher. My grandmother, many of you have seen her. Uh she's quite a woman. I I'll say that. And uh Several, <coughs> several Thanksgivings ago, we were in Houston, and we had a, I don't know if you, if you know what this is, but it's a, it's a turducken. Uh -huh. Okay. It's a turkey, duck, chicken, and they put it together. I don't know what that means. It don't sound pleasant, but it tastes good. It's an abomination to me, but it tastes good. <laughs> And my uncle was there, and he, he wanted, uh, we, we were trying to, wanted some potatoes, some potatoes. <clears throat> well, my grandmother hadn't went to go get any. So because <laughs> my uncle valued potatoes, she goes into the freezer and brings and dumps the, the crinkly french fries on top of the turducken, and that became the meal. Now that's all wrong. It is a potato, but it's not. But because my uncle valued having potatoes, she wanted to supply it any way she could. Sometimes we ought to try doing what God did. We might not get it right. It might be crinkly fries. But do what he say do. 
Do you value God's word? The Bible says that we ought to meditate on it day and night. And I wonder, are, are we, are, do we really value it that much? Is it, is, is it so important to us that we, we will neglect things we know we don't need to have it? We got people that don't even have Bibles, and we have it fully, but we can't pick it up. People that only have the New Testament, and we, and we have everything at our disposal, and it's, 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 it's like that we've become weakened because we have so much abundance. This rich man is not, uh, it, yeah, you could say, well, yeah, I ain't got that much money. Yeah, but there are certain things you are rich in that are taking your focus away of what should be your value. Catherine Hudson. Yeah, that's her name. Catherine Hudson. Young lady, she's confused. She wants the riches. She wants the fame. She wants notoriety. But she also wants the church to stop being so judgmental. She grew up in the church. But she has now transcended to a superstar. The superstar has her own name. It's no longer Catherine Hudson. It's Katy Perry. So she's crying on this video because she's torn because she has two different value systems working. She wants the money. She wants this. She likes that. But she has no peace. So rather than pick, as the Bible says, choose ye this day who you're going to serve, she wants to straddle the fence and can't figure out why she's having such problems. Value matters. One seems to be more valuable to her than the other. But one actually is more valuable than the other. She's picked fool's gold over real gold. Yeah. Come on, preach up. Yes, sir. Come on. Many times we make decisions on a whim and, and, we, and we think it's the best thing and God is saying, hold up. Right. And, then, and then there are other times God is, is giving you the green light to gallop on through and we just sit like a bump on a log. Right. Right. <laughs> what, are we, what are we valuing? What, 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 what is it that we need to get, get going in this life of Christ? So it says, <clears throat> I would say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So there's a, there's a turn right now. He valued the money. He valued things, but he didn't value time. This is, this is the problem we have. Young people. It may not seem proper to you that you have to go to this church. It may not seem proper to you that you have to follow rules. It may not seem proper to you that you have to do certain things that other children get or, or can't do or get to do. But your parents know there's a value in teaching you certain things. I mentioned this, uh, I don't remember who I was with, but I, I said I, I had a, I think it was 
Pastor Barnes, I had a, I almost had a fight with a dude years ago <laughs> in the eighth grade. No, I was eight years old. I was eight years old. Dude's name was Justin. I remember. Because I'm I, I've not had many fights, but I was about we was about to come to blows. I was <laughs> I was eight years old. Now here's the fight. Here's the here, here's what's going on. He's trying to persuade me that Santa Claus is real. <laughs> and I'm telling him, no, he's not. And so he's going through the whole thing, North Pole and this, and, and, and yeah, and he comes down the, uh, the chimney with presents. I said, Justin, my house ain't got no chimney. <laughs> well, you know, he's got magic and this, that, and the other. Will not receive the truth whatsoever. Because that he valued that. And I'm like, okay, at eight, at eight years old, I understand that this don't make no sense to me. Because why does Santa have my mama's handwriting? Why the presents under the tree before the 20, 24th? But we, we, we do this and we think it's okay. Right. It's okay to lie and say this because that's just, that's just a little lie. Uh -huh. and, and it's like, well, what exactly is our value system? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Right. That's confusion. Yep. Why, why we just can't say, I wanted to buy you something? We got to formulate a whole doctrine and lie and fable, a whole story. Yep, yep. 